Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to uh, present our work on nature-based solutions or NBS at uh, IUCN. Um, uh, all the work that I'll be presenting today is, uh, was developed in collaboration between uh, a lot of colleagues uh, and experts at the IUCN Commission on Ecosystem Management and at the IUCN uh, Secretariat. Uh, today, in this presentation, I would like to give you an overview on the development of NBS, then present IUCN's framework for NBS, the links between the different uh, types of concept that are related to, to, to NBS, uh, give you a uh, brief overview on the global standards uh, on NBS that uh, IUCN is developing and, and give you some resources on nature-based solutions. So since the first mention of the term in 2002, beside a few publications that mentioned and that made uh, nature-based solution or NBS more visible, it's only in the past uh, five to six uh, last years that um, NBS is starting to really take off. And I would say uh, that most of the work has been developing in along two axes. One is on the European side and, and the other one is um, within IUCN. So on the European side, at the European Commission, uh, some important um, uh, events or, or things that happened were um, the Biodiversa workshop first that, um, that resulted in a typology for nature-based solution that will be presented in the next, uh, next presentation. Then of course the NBS that is at the core of the EU research and innovative uh, program and a lot of funding are invested in, in research for NBS. Um, a lot of research is, is being developed and, and the two, two upcoming uh, presentations will, will provide some of uh, excellent examples of that research. And then some online platforms such as Think Nature, Opla, Nature-Based Solutions Initiative and so on uh, that are being uh, that, that were established. And then on the IUCN side, uh, since the World Conservation Congress or the WCC in 2012, NBS has become a third of IUCN's global program. In the last WCC in 2016, uh, we launched a, a publication on nature-based solution on the framework, um, and we adopted a, res a resolution uh, on uh, defining nature-based solutions uh, to address societal challenges. Uh, and we had a, a series of a large events focusing specifically on, on nature-based solutions. And then in the past two years, we've been doing some further analysis on the NBS principles, and we're now about to, uh, um, to we're now reviewing the global standard for NBS. So nature-based solutions, according uh, to the resolution, are actions to protect, manage, and restore natural or modified ecosystems, which address societal challenges effectively and adaptively, providing both human well-being and biodiversity benefits. And by these societal challenges, what we're focusing on mainly is climate change, food security, water security, disaster risk, uh, human health, and social and economic uh, development. In addition to the definition on nature-based solution, there was a list of eight principles uh, for NBS that was also adopted. And these should be taken into account uh, when referring uh, to nature-based solutions. So I won't go into detail. Uh, you can find it in the report. But uh, just to mention a few examples, principle number two, for instance, is about um, uh, the fact that nature-based solutions can be complemented by other types of solutions, such as grain infrastructure. Or uh, principle number six, uh, it's important that nature-based nature solutions are applied at a large scale, so at the landscape scale. Um, so to move from uh, a small scale um, or pilot scale case study into, into something larger in order to have a large influence and actually address uh, societal challenges. Um, we considered uh, nature-based solutions as an umbrella type uh, of, of approach that incorporates or that covers uh, a wide range of well-established um, ecosystem-based concepts or approaches. And, and all of these approaches within the NBS umbrella uh, are have in common the fact that they are addressing societal challenges, that they are based or related on nature, and that they have as uh, benefits, they have benefits both for human and, and for nature. So just to give you 
some examples uh, ecological of, of this concept within the, the NBS umbrella. There is ecological restoration, for instance, ecosystem-based adaptation and ecosystem-based mitigation or green infrastructure um, or ecosystem-based management or area-based conservation. Before moving on to, the, to developing the operational framework and the, the, the global standard for NBS, it was important also to, to do some further study on, on the, the principles. I won't go into, into the methodology here, but the outcome, the main outcome there were that um, the principles for nature-based solutions are different from the principles um, in other types of similar um, approaches. And, and three of them are really standing out. I mean, most of them, sorry, are, are similar, but three of them are, are really standing out. Uh, the, the first, the, the second, second um, principle on synergies with other type of solutions, as I mentioned earlier. The principle number six on landscape uh, scale. And then the last one pol on policy integration. So it's really important to have, um, to, to incorporate policy within the, the implementation of uh, NBS. So here, I would like to give you a hypothetical scenario of um, a protected area that is within a coastal landscape. And this is just to illustrate some important points about uh, nature-based solutions that I made earlier, about uh, nature-based solutions that can be complemented with other types of, of measures, such as um, conservation, in this case, and gray infrastructure. So in the original landscape, we have this, this watershed that is um, close to a coast, coastline with mangroves and, and there is a protected area on the side that is close to this, this ecosystem, natural ecosystem and that was established originally in order to conserve one specific species. And then there is the forest around the, the, the watershed and there are some, some human settlements. So the, the natural ecosystem is, is, is able to absorb uh, flooding that are occurring from inland or coming from, from the sea. So because of degradation, uh, if it's from, from the forest or from the coastline, removal of the, the mangrove to do other types of, of infrastructure, for instance, um, there are flooding, the, 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 the ecosystem is not, no longer able to, to absorb these floodings. And, and, and the, um, also the, the growing um, city on the side also is, um, is all different, uh, is, is, is um, all impacting the fact that, that the, the, the overall ecosystem is no, no longer uh, able to, to, to absorb the flooding. So anyway, one, um, a way for, uh, for us to address such, um, such disaster in this case, so such flooding risk would be to, to, to use the protected area that now has a critical role, not only for conservation, but really to, to help reduce the flooding within the, the overall landscape as it is reconnecting to the, the wider, uh, to, to, the, to the forest that is, that is uh, being restored uh, around the, the, the watershed. There is also restoration uh, along the coast. There is restoration um, in, in the, the watershed, maybe green infrastructure as well in the city. And, and we can also see an, an uh, gray infrastructure in the middle that is, that is helping also to complement uh, all of these different types of approach and within, within the general landscape. So now, uh, last, I would like to, to introduce you to, to the global standard that IUCN is, is currently developing. So what we want to standardize is the use of nature as solution for societal challenges. There are several reasons to develop a standard for nature-based solutions. For instance, to ensure the quality of the NBS intervention that are being implemented, or to safeguard nature from over-exploitation, uh, to build a common language and an understanding on what, on what are NBS and how they, they should be implemented. Um, then to incentivize positive sustainable change and to engage multi-stakeholders in, in, impl in the implementation of NBS. And then why is it important to set a global standard for NBS so it can be applied across a wide range of contexts and, and sectors, also to guide um, policy formulation in, in the long run to be relevant also to the, to the private sector, 
and then to have that action and the impact at, at a larger scale, as I said, so it's really to move from that pilot scale in, in, into a, a, a larger scale. Um, so we are currently reviewing it, but, but at the moment we have seven proposed criteria and within in the standard, in this global standard, we have seven proposed criteria. Within this criteria, we have 33 indicators. Um, um, the main aspect that are, they're covering is nature and biodiversity, is transparency and inclusion within NBS, using adaptive management, governance and monitoring tools, uh, the aspect of trade-offs, the aspect of um, landscape or seascape scape, scale, then the synergy that I referred to with other types of intervention and policy integration. So just to give you the timeline for finalizing the NBS standard, and please, if you would like to be um, involved in this process, you can contact the email below. So we've just finalized now the internal consultation process for the standard. We're about to start the first public consultation for the standard uh, actually next week then there will be i think the, the consultation will be open for two months then there will be a second public uh, public consultation of of a month in june and then in between we want to do a pilot application so if you would like to to test the standard in your case study please do reach out to us and then our aim is to officially launch the nbs standard uh, at the upcoming world conservation congress in june 2020 in marseille so my last slide is about some useful resources on NBS since I had to, to make this the presentation very short. But you're welcome to go in our uh, IUCN uh, report. It's downloadable online and then you can, you can see more in detail the, the overall, uh, IUCN framework for NBS. And you can see also 10 case studies of successful um, nature-based solutions that were implemented across the world and in different contexts. Then there's the, the NBS webpage on the IUCN CM website and uh, the, the more general IUCN website that has a lot of information on the different types of concepts uh, that are uh, incorporated within the um, NBS umbrella. So thank you very much and please don't hesitate to reach out if you want more information, if you're interested to, to join the thematic group or if you want to review the standard.